Hey guys, here we are back on Wind Chaser Farms. Uh, we just finished field 44. I uh, got a uh, pretty good yield on that. I uh, had to actually go back into my 3D as I w suspected and change the yield on my soybeans a little bit um, because it was right around like 90 bushel an acre, which is too high for me. Um, so went ahead and reduced that just a tad. Uh, so now, uh, because we're not even at ideal uh, ratios, uh, we uh, went ahead and washed all of our equipment, refilled the combine. Um, I just finished uh, retexturing this uh, um, uh, draper header. Um, got the reels, uh, rotation animations. Got the uh, mouse control movements. Uh, I still have to uh, put in the uh, hydraulics and lights, but uh, it's washable now. Gets dirty because that was bothering me for a while. So the only thing I have left to do is uh, get a uh, header trailer. Uh, converted uh, completely and uh, then we'll be in business so we are working on this field here field I think I'm going to have to drop my header a little bit around here to get around these trees Those trees are rigid. <clears throat> uh, we're gonna probably section. Whoops. We're probably gonna section. This is see. This is why I need a header trailer. We're gonna section this field into two. Um, we're gonna do. Um, probably the straight straight half down to the stop sign over there, where it kind of becomes a triangle. And then we're going to leave that as another section. And then we will be done with soybeans for this growth stage. Um, and then we'll be heading on to corn. Uh, we have field 13 over there, but that's a full growth stage behind. So four days behind. Um, technically, we don't actually need to stagger our growth stages. But uh, this is we're still on our first day of harvest. And we already knocked out field 44 that was... Uh, like 120 acres or something like that and it's only 11 o'clock uh, well we did start at like 4 30 in the morning though so we don't really we're at that point where we we really don't need a stagger but if we were to play um, where we would only like farm for 10 hours or 12 hours a day We would probably have to uh, stake our growth stages a little bit. I think we I think we could pretty much do eight. Um, we're at 460 right now, and we could probably harvest all 460 of those acres in two days. Um, so we could probably get up to seven, eight hundred acres, all in the same growth stage. Uh, but then you run into issues of putting down your tillage, because tillage takes a long time. Um, I don't know. It's pretty tricky how you want to juggle your fields. Because if they're all in the same growth stage, if you do everything at the same time, then it, it, it all receives the same benefits, and it receives... Maybe it's a dry week. You know, it's a really hot, dry week. Then all of a sudden your moisture's down versus maybe it's the next week's it's a little bit wetter and so the fields you plan to have more moisture so it's a gamble it's a juggle I mean you could always put down some kind of uh, uh, a liquid or a herbicide or something like that and the booster you could just even put down water sometimes I just put down water in my Montag behind the planter because I don't need fertilizer, I don't need herbicide, but I do need moisture.
It, uh, it's definitely fun to actually play the game now instead of just uh, trying to like convert convert uh, mods or build mods or uh, work on scripting of mods. So put in a lot of work, a lot of hours, and now I have some nice uh, machines to use, and uh, it's pretty enjoyable. A nice map to use. Zero, 60 frames a second. That's how you know you built an amazing map and you're playing with the uh, amazing uh, 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 air free mods. None of my models are jerry-rigged or Lego built in GE. They're all made and all have AO textures in Blender. I do a lot of my work. I don't even really use Giants Editor except to place nodes and line up my nodes for like hydraulics and attacher points. And um, otherwise, I pretty much do everything in the XML just because it's easier for me at least. I do all my texturing in using the XML, I do all my collisions using XML, I do all of my uh, um, well, I do use uh, GE for like uh, center of mass and and uh, density for the weight other than that it's there's really no need for it I mean, you can you can adjust your particles, and you can adjust. Uh, I'll use the material the material tab when I'm assigning my normal maps to see what kind of value it needs to be to look the best. But uh, I do no building whatsoever. Um, I don't rip apart mods like others do. I don't I don't do that. I used to, but that was before I knew how to use Blender. And uh, it's so much, so much nicer now when you can actually make uh, shapes and make it all part of the mod itself with AO textures. It's so this combine is set up. Um, I have all my uh, IC uh, little buttons on here because uh, these panels um, are built to open. Um, same with the doors. Um, but I just haven't got around to scripting in the IC yet. Um, it's not that difficult. I've done enough of it in my past that um, it's just like uh, anything else these days. Um, although the animations, I have to put in all the animations the old way in 13, and then it's, it's interesting. Like that animation file. Um, I don't know why they did it that way, but it's not the end of the world. Because what you can do is if a mod comes and you want to change like animations or add animations, what you do is you just straight up delete the animation file in your mods folder. That way, um, 
you can actually edit exit you know you can edit again because once it's once you save it in GE it will automatically save an animation file so what I always do is I open up um, I split screen it I have on my right screen I have the mod in GE just so I can reference the nodes the the node ID and then kind of rotation rotation and translations and then on my my left side I have the i3d open in notepad with my animations animation attributes uh, and I'm just plugging away adding in my timing my rotations my nodes uh, my, my node IDs and so that's how I do it I don't know how anyone else does but I feel like that's the most logical way to do it and then once you're happy um, once you're happy with with um, with that don't save your GE model. Don't save the right side of the screen. Don't save the that's open in Giants. Save the one that's in the XML. Delete the GE one and reopen your model in GE, and then your animations should be highlighted in yellow. Um, so that's my little tip for you. So uh, surprisingly, this field has very little. Oh, there's some weeds over there down in the low lowlands. But up here in the hilly highland sections, it's pretty free of weeds. Uh, moisture almost 60 percent. Seems like our crop's doing pretty well. Yeah, so we just knocked out 44 and pretty easy to harvest that field. I went the long way a few times and or going this way now is going uh, east and west. It's, I like it a lot more than going uh, north and south. I'm doing the same thing in this field here, going east to west. So if you look here, our nutrients, uh, we have a little bit higher moisture um, and our nutrients are lower. That's because we never, we never uh, ripped our headlands. So our moisture will be higher because we did one less thing of tillage here and our nutrients will also be lower because we never tilled in all that residue. Um, but our ratios are actually closer, more closer to ideal than the rest of the field. So. Actually, we should be getting better yields here, <laughs> which is pretty much the inverse of what would happen in real life. But I have the attacher joint in this combine that it actually has a, a rotation like a five degree rotation on it so my draper will flex as will my corn header you do it's just easier to edit the combine than it is to edit the headers themselves because then you only have to do it once and you can put on all the in-game headers you can put on whatever header you want and it will flex on this machine because you edit the attacher joint on the combine versus the uh, implement that's another little tip Some weeds over here in this little hole. We're going to get our overload, of course, set up pretty quick.
I love this truck. It's not the best looking, but man, it's great. I love the sound. It drives great. It's got power. I noticed that a lot of people have been kind of like obsessed with trucks in this game. I mean, I like, I mean, a truck. A truck's a truck. It's farm sim. It's about the farm machinery is where it's at. But I mean, trucks are part of farming. I get it, but it's, it's not truck sim. It's farm sim. So, we have our grain cart over here, after we finish washing it, just park it in the grass. So I think last season I put in probably a hundred or a hundred and ten thousand into my crops I you know anywhere you know between the seed the fertilizer and the uh, wages and I uh, ended up getting shit I don't even remember probably like seven eight hundred thousand out so put in a hundred thousand get out eight hundred I'm not complaining whoops my bad I, I've, I've seen people comment that this bin is unrealistic and the capacity is unrealistic. It's ac it actually is real. It does exist. The capacity is accurate. Um, and I understand that it is probably um, more for those big wheat farmers and flat Dakotas and such. I understand that you'll probably have to augment your combine a little bit. You'll probably have to put fluid in the tires, weights in the back, because you're increasing your center of gravity and moving it forward. Plus, you're right on the center tires, which is acts as a fulcrum, a pivot point, uh, a purchase point, so so to speak. Um, and I'm sure you might have to like put a different set of axles or something on your tires if you're running this bin, because it's an extra 400 bushels. I mean, the standard is 400 bushels and with this one it's 800 bushel capacity so you'll just have to uh, <clears throat> when you're looking for capacity like this you're gonna have to augment your combine a little bit especially when you're running a large draper like this is, is uh, what 34 36 uh, kg anyways for those that are saying it's unrealistic it's actually very realistic I mean, I've seen people post pictures of them installing these bins on combines at dealerships. <laughs> you, you go, like, I've seen it in Wisconsin, even, like, back, back home. I've seen these bins on their combines. I think it would be better to have that kind of bin on a track system, like an ATI track, but... For the for the farmers unwilling to reduce their headers header widths, they just want more capacity. Just like this Kinsey green card, it's 1,500 bushel. Need a. It looks pretty good behind the 9R. And <laughs> I I brought it home with the 8R, and it just looks so. The, that 8R tractor looks so tiny. It's a big chunk of steel. So I have like a uh, little uh, cords going to the lights there, a little extra detail. The ambiance. So 
So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and come back on our fifth. So, so far I think I've spent 5000 6000 probably 5000 on wage wage payment and I'm only running the the grain cart at this point I'm trucks just sitting I'm running the combine because uh, it is just soybean yield yield is about a fifth or a sixth of that of what the corn is going to be So you can see where we are on the map. I mean, field two is pretty, pretty, pretty large. It's uh, 45, 45 hectares. In comparison to the rest of the map, it just seems like a, just a, an average field. Um, so many acres to farm. It's just unfortunate that so many people have pissed me off these last uh, five, six months that I no longer feel feel like releasing any mods. Um, that in a combination of the fact that no one else is also releasing uh, mods of equal quality. It's, it's just uh, a bad time to be uh, someone who can't mod, that's for sure. I would, I would probably be playing uh, 13 still if I couldn't mod, just because all the mods are already there and you have maps. But for 15, there's 15 is just all these these uh, people that think they can mod. All they're doing is releasing reskins and like SketchUp models and Lego builds and Giants editor and whatever. If they're having fun, that's great. But uh, and then they try to like heckle me saying, well I release, why don't you? It's like, the fact that you're trying to compare my builds to yours is kind of insulting, but whatever, it's not going to change the fact that it's not happening. <laughs> Sorry. But I'm at the same time, like the whole point of it is to motivate, There's it's not an issue, it's the issue is... There's just so many, there's not a lot of people that can mod, and mod well, and make quality builds anymore. They just, they just disappeared for whatever reason. Like Julian, Julian's busy farming for real. Kramer J, he just left playing other games or doing other things. You know, so a lot of the the modelers that focused on American equipment, they're just they're just gone. Um, so that motivated me to get my butt into gear and uh, develop my my uh, skills and techniques a little bit. Um, and so hopefully that motivates others as well. I mean, I've I have all kinds of requests to like make YouTube videos or like time lapse of model making, and it's like it just it's not practical for me. Uh, that's a lot of work on my end. Um, there's a lot of resources already available. I mean, you don't need a, a video dedicated to just making a model for farm sim. Uh, 
there's a lot of blender tutorials out there on how to like make a cube how to make bevels how to make UV maps how to uh, use vertex you know snap to vertices how to you know my YouTube video on how to do uh, select by seams how to detach and select components um, but um, one thing I did learn is when you always use modifiers last because it kind of destroys your ability to do a select by seams um, tutorials um, that tutorial also shows you how to assign textures and whatnot and um, I forgot I haven't watched it since I made it however many months ago the XML, that's the easiest stuff that you can possibly do is just scripting in your nodes. Um, but we're, you know, that's the last thing that you should really worry about. The, it's, you know, why put all that time and energy into a model when the model itself isn't that great or the model itself doesn't have uh, nice textures to it or uh, nice normal maps. So what I use, I use GIMP. Uh, for a lot of my normal maps and uh, you have to download a plugin I believe uh, in order to use normal maps on that and then I do everything with paint.net I save everything because for some reason like GIMP doesn't like saving DDS files so I just open the files up again and save them as DDS and I do all my uh, spec maps in paint.net as well um, It really bothers me how quest play goes over crops. But. Biggers can't be choosers. I'll live with it. It's just funny watch it's like seeing all the uh, screenshots and like people talking uh, shit about me. It's hilarious. You know, it's always people that get banned. Like when I ban them from my page or for the this farming screens, it's because they use that as their own little podium to rant and bitch and you know, is being stupid. Just stupid individuals that you know, whatever. They're just retarded. <laughs> Or they ask dumb questions, and then they get all shocked and bent on shape why they got banned. Then they say they don't care, but then they go on for like hours and the rest of the day and weeks and whining and bitching, so they get all bent out of shape over nothing. Too much time on their hands. Way too much time on my hands. We're filling this Kinsey right up. There she goes. Oh, this guy's going to be coming in hot to that corner. That corner. This will be interesting to see how he takes this. 
gonna be one sharp corner. Yep. Come on, turn, 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 turn. You can make it. Wow, he actually made it. That's impressive. Ah, shit. That's why you made it. My truck's too far. Mm. The struggle is real today. I'm just uh, playing a little bit during lunch until uh, my next class, which is at 1.30. Just a lab, it's 1.30 to 5. It's uh, fixed prosthodontics. What we're doing is fixing and bridge preps. And we're also milling crowns today on our syrup machines. So, just a chill day, chill Friday, TGIF. A little bit more weeds over here. Oh my gosh, I can't even see with this header. So a fully loaded Kinsey fills our trailer up to 90%. But that trailer is rated at 58,000 such and such. As you can see, just because I made the dynamic planes uh, really heap, heap on that thing, so. It's the only reason why the capacity I, I've made the capacity because I looked on the Wilson trailer and it uh, that's like a 10 inch heap or 9 inch heap I think that's what it's rated at it's like 1600 or something bushels or 1650 or so I don't know what it is heap but it's pretty close to that The only downside is when it's heaped like that, you can't even use the cover. The cover, the grain sticks through the cover. So. So these are pretty long strips we're running. I don't know how much we had in the tank before we started this row, but we're probably doing like 30 or 40 percent of our tank per 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 line here.
So I'll probably end the video for here for you guys, and then next one will probably be uh, corn. So thanks for watching. Subscribe and like. Thanks.